Hello, I'm Gretchen Zaitsev. I am the new K-12 Instructional Supports Library Media Specialist, and I will be hosting today's Bite Size PD. Today, we will be discussing Utah's online library and how to use it in your classroom. This session is being recorded. As with all professional development, these are the norms and expectations. Hopefully during this presentation, you will be present and engaged in order to learn the material being featured. You don't have to worry about micing yourself or your camera, obviously, since this is being recorded. This is our multi-tiered system of supports framework for best practices for all educators. The learning intention of this bite-sized PD is to familiarize you with the resources available in Utah's online library. After this session, you will be able to access, use, and share resources from Utah's online library in order to enhance classroom instruction. You'll know you're successful when you have integrated a resource from Utah's online library into your instruction. These are the topics we will be covering. Accessing Utah's online library, both at school and at home. Using Utah's online library, both the resources, activities, and lesson plans that are already embedded in the platform, and how to share the information that you're finding in the library so that you can use it in the classroom or in your Canvas instruction. So what is Utah's online library? It's a curated set of resources that are provided free to all students and educators in Utah. So it provides access to subscription databases and services such as eMedia, CultureGrams, Digital Science Online, EBSCO, Gale, Noodle Tools, Utah Digital like, <clears throat> Newspapers, and so much more. It also provides basic access to World Book Encyclopedia. For your information, Canyon School District subscribes to a much more robust version of World Book Encyclopedia online. If you are at a secondary school, please see a teacher librarian in your building. Uh, for more information about how to access World Book Encyclopedia. If you are at an elementary school, you can contact my office for more information about that resource. That resource, uh, World Book Encyclopedia Online, will be featured in an upcoming Bite Size PD. So we're going to talk about accessing first. On the slide, you will see the URL for Utah's online library. It's simply online library, no spaces, dot UEN dot org. When you are on campus um, and you click on the URL, it should automatically authenticate. However, if you're off campus or you and your students are at home, the login is online and the password is information. This is what the Utah Library, Utah Online Library looks like from the URL. So the landing page has a reference collection You'll see a frame for Utah resources, general resources. And at the bottom, you'll see here on the left-hand frame, 
that it provides the login and password for Utah Online Library when you are off site um, so that you're not on the CSD network. Um, you should be able to log in by using this URL and login and password. We will talk more about each of these frames during our discussion. So using Utah's online library. We'll travel back. In the reference collection, you'll see a number of subscription databases that are available for your use. Some of these are in English and some of them are in Spanish. If you notice that Digital Science Online is also available as Ciencias in Espanol, and World Book Online also has a Spanish version that you can access on Utah's online library. There are other databases and tools available that will help you with your classroom instruction. Culture Grams, for instance, provides access and information about countries, including each of the states in the United States. It is leveled in that there is a kids edition, which could be used in elementary or with emerging readers. When you explore culture grams, you can do so by using the navigation. For instance, if I wanted to learn more about the state of Utah, I would scroll down until I found Utah. And it would provide information about the state itself. The left-hand navigation provides <clears throat> historical context as well as data and information, including population numbers, cultural notes, a picture of the flag, and state symbols. At the very bottom of this resource, you will see um, a tool that will help cite this source if a student is using it in research. So that's a quick overview of the type of information that you can find within culture grams. If you notice, um, we have two different types of databases um, that are provided by different vendors. So we have EBSCO and we have Gale in Context. If I were in elementary school, I would click on the elementary school and you notice there's three, two different encyclopedias and another database. So for instance, if I were to be looking for information to share with my students and we were studying endangered animals, I could click on primary search and type in the word pandas. And what I'm going to find is a list of articles in age appropriate, appropriate magazines about pandas. I can use the left-hand filters to change um, the date range or the types of information. Um, but what I'm interested in is this zoo book about pandas. So when I click on it, it's going to show me an abstract 
And over on the right hand side, it's going to show me a variety of ways that I can save and share this information. If I were to click on the PDF full text, it's actually going to open this document, which is 19 pages of information about pandas. So a zoo book is actually a small magazine devoted to just one topic. In this case, pandas. So it provides pictures of pandas, more information about the panda's skeleton and muscles, pretty much everything you'd like to know about pandas for an advanced reader. If you were to share this information with students, I would suggest using this link in the right-hand navigation, the permalink, as it will generate a link that will take the student directly to this information. When you sign in, you can save this information to a folder. Also on the right-hand navigation, you can email yourself a link to this information or place it in a folder or export the information. So that's an example of using EBSCO host available for elementary school educators. Novelist K-8 can be used by educators to find books that may be of interest to readers in their classroom. So for instance, or if you wanted to learn more about a novel that you're considering um, applying for approval to be read as part of a literature circle. If I wanted to learn more, about the book Prisoner 3087, and I'm a middle school educator. I can look it up multiple ways. And here are all the books written by the author, Alan Gratz. So for instance, I, if I was interested in doing, um, and here's the book I was looking for um, in my search, I'd left out the B. But I could find out more about the title itself. I could read the book reviews. If I had a student who was um, a fan of the author, then I could use this page to help that student find another book by the same author um, or uh, books in a series. So Novelist K8 is a great way to look up titles for you and your students. E-media provides access to media curated by the Utah Education Network. Sounds Abound provides students and yourself access to copyrighted um, uh, free music. So if you're developing a slideshow or um, 
students are creating a project where they need sound effects or music, Soundsbound is a great resource. If I'm a secondary educator and my students are doing research or other inquiry projects, um, the Utah Online Library provides access to Noodle Tools, which is a platform that students can use um, to curate the information they are finding during their inquiry process it helps them cite and organize that information. If you need more help using you Noodle Tools, please reach out to the teacher or librarian in your building. Gale in Context also offers access to a variety of databases. Um, this is the high school version. So you can see here that we have biography, global issues, high school, uh, opposing views, science, one file, one file news, and Gale eBooks. If I was having students research a topic that has multiple viewpoints, I could use Gale in Context opposing viewpoints to find information from both sides or multiple sides of the, of the discussion, such as with global warming and climate change. If you notice, on searching the topic global warming and climate change, I can find um, 500 viewpoints, statistics, audio clips, websites, references, primary sources, magazines, biographies, images, news articles, infographics, videos, and academic journals. This is a great way for your students to find curated, reliable, incredible information about these topics. Another way that educators can use Utah Online Library is the quick, quick reference button available at the top of the website. For instance, if I go up here to the top of the web page and click on quick reference online, This page has curated each of the different databases and tools available in the online library by topics or uh, by other information. So instead of clicking on each tab or top database to find out what's inside, you can use this page for instance, if I was looking for biographies, I could find them both in Culturegrams, in the EBSCO image collection, Gale Biography in Context, and World Book using the Biography Center Kids and People. So the quick reference is a great way to search the Canyons Online Library for information in the format that you're looking for, or on a broad topic such as animals. Another way to use Utah's online library is at the bottom of the webpage. You will see a section that includes um, activities and lesson plans. So going back to the website, if we scroll to the bottom of the page and we click on activities, these are ideas for using the tools and information available through Utah's online library in each of your content areas. So for instance, you will find uh, fine arts, language arts, mathematics, as well as Gale lesson plans available through this site. 
for instance, if I was to click on mathematics, picturing equivalent fractions, here's my essential question. Okay. This meets the standards for mathematics in fourth grade, and it tells you where to find the videos in Utah's online library, which is under the e-media tab. Scrolling further, more information about rocks, for instance, is available through using EBSCO database in uh, the online library, and this meets the standards for science in second grade. So if I was to click here, more information, including standards, how to use that information, lesson plans with objectives. So you can see how useful Utah's online library can be for educators. Going back to activities, Gale lesson plans. So this gives you access to resource guides, scavenger hunts, and more. So if you're teaching your students how to use this tool, okay, there are ways for you to learn how to master using Gale products. There are tip sheets for using. But you can sort this information by type. So if all I wanted was lesson plans, Then when I click lesson plans, you notice uh, here's a Gale in context, context biography on civil rights leader lesson plan. And I can view that lesson plan. It tells me um, the grade level, the content area, summary of the lesson, et cetera, using the resources available in Gale in context biography. Under general resources, uh, you'll notice a dictionary of thesaurus, um, other tools for finding primary sources, including the Library of Congress, Mountain West Digital Library, the National Archives, the National Library of Medicine. If you're doing um, <clears throat> Looking for open educational resources, OER resources are also available from UEN. And this could be its own uh, professional development. So we will not cover this at this time, but I just wanted to make you aware that it, this information is available to you as an educator. Sharing these resources with students. One of the best ways to share with students is for you actually to sign in as yourself. So in this example, I am in Gale in context. I used my Canyons district email to log into an account. It then allows me to share this information to my drive, uh, to uh, OneDrive. I can email this information, I can download this information, and I can send this information to myself in, uh, or I can print this information. 
Um, you'll see uh, additional buttons <clears throat> across the top that allow you to do similar things. Again, the get the link button allows you to share a permalink with students that will take them directly to this page. On this page, you can um, note and highlight and save it um, to your drive. Uh, in explanation, some of these other buttons allow you to change the font um, type and size and to have the article read. So even though this <clears throat> uh, opposing viewpoints article on ransomware attackers, um, the Lexile is 1480 um, and it's considered a level five. You can help your um, emerging readers and multilingual learners by having them listen to the article as they read along. I hope you have enjoyed learning more about Utah's online library. If you have any questions about using this tool, please reach out to myself or to the teacher librarian at your school. You can contact me at gretchen.zaitsev at canyonsdistrict.org and I'll be happy to assist you with these and other resources you may need to support students.